Hey YouTube, so welcome to part four of creating target devices with Citrix PBS. So actually in the last video, we went through Boot Device Manager and actually how to create that partition within our existing master image. Today we're gonna to be creating target devices from that master, and I'll show you two ways of how to do that. We can either use a Zen Desktop Wizard or the Streamed PBS Wizard, and I'll explain the, the differences between those as well. So first things first, when we have our master here, so here I have my master. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to create a snapshot from that. And from that snapshot, you're gonna to wanna to create a template and save it as a template. So you'll see that option here. It's gonna be a little bit different in Hyper-V or VMware ESX, um, but same principles apply. And you'll eventually have your, your template in which we can provision machines from. So once you have that, we're gonna jump over to the provisioning services server. So if I go to the server here and I right click my site, you'll see I have two different options that we can use in terms of creating target devices. So we have the Zen Desktop Setup Wizard. So this is fairly new. I believe this came out in PVS 7.9. So we, I'll walk you through that and explain the differences. And we have the streamed VM setup wizard as well. So let's first go into the Zen Desktop setup wizard here. And really one of the main differences between the Zen Desktop setup wizard and the streamed VM wizard is the Zen Desktop setup wizard will actually automatically put these target devices in your machine catalog for you. So it creates one less step. And also, if you haven't created that, that bootstrap partition, if you, ha if you haven't walked through what I did in the last video, it'll actually create that partition automatically and put the location of your PBS server within that partition for you. So in other words, if I do next here, let's, let's walk through this really quick. It's going to ask you for your delivery controller FQDN. So as you can see, I already have mine there. And you just do next and it's going to wait. And we are on my third host. So I'm going to choose Zen Server 3. And let's see if I remember my password or not. And you'll see it's loading templates. And this is why we need that template I mentioned earlier. So again, I created a snapshot of my master. I have my VDA, my target device software, and all my other applications on that master. Then I can choose from it. You have the option of choosing the VDA version. Um, I'm on 7.15, so of course I'll choose 7.9 or later. It's gonna ask you for your VDisk. And if you don't see any VDisk here, chances are your VDisk is in private mode. So definitely put that into standard. Um, we can either create a new machine catalog or use an existing. So I created one earlier called Windows 10 test. So I'm gonna choose that one, but you can easily create a new one. And then you'll see we have some options here. So I can choose to create 10 virtual machines. I can assign them each four vCPU. If I want four gigs of RAM, I could give four gigs of RAM. And then we're also going to assign a write cache tr to it as well for those temporary writes that we'll be creating. Um, something to note as well with the Zen Desktop Wizard. Actually, never mind. We'll, we'll talk about the page file earlier, or we'll talk about the page file later. Essentially, when you want to assign a page file to your target device as well, you should do that from the, the actual C drive of your master, not the actual write cache itself. So just side note, size your page file accordingly, assign it to the C drive of your master, and PBS will take care of that and apply it to the right cache drive that's assigned to the, the actual target device. So I will cancel that for now because I actually already created a machine earlier. And you'll see I have one here called WinTest1. Win so I'll power that on, um, but you also see that that located here. So it created a device collection for me automatically. If I jump over to my delivery controller, I'll show you where it created that machine catalog. And of course it also 
created uh, an AD account for that machine as well, and I uh, I told it where to put it in terms of OU. So it went into my VDI OU. So it's doing all of these things for you. So you'll see I have a Win 10 test catalog there. Um, but what you will know is under delivery groups, I do not have a delivery group. So I, I would have to assign that still. And you saw earlier, it also gave me the option of choosing Pixie or BDM. You might be asking yourself, well, how do I tell the bootstrap or the BDM of which PBS server to go to. So how do I sign that bootstrap file? If you go to servers here and click one of your PBS servers, you'll see an option to configure bootstrap. And here you can, you can actually add your PBS servers that you wanna to apply to that bootstrap file. So I can put dot 34, which is my first PBS server, dot 35, which is my second one. So since 7.9, you could update these on the fly as well. So if you made a change to your PBS, um, your, uh, your IP, you can easily go in here and update it. And from the actual device collection, when this is powered off, you'd have the option of updating that, that bootstrap file here. It actually give you a choice to do that. So a lot of a lot of things you can do automatically without much intervention at all. But just know this is where you actually go in and update the actual bootstrap file. And here you can choose options like ver verbose mode, advanced memory support, so on and so forth. So so that's one way of doing it. Um, the other way is we can choose a streamed VM setup wizard. So this came about because provisioning services can be used for non-Citrix workloads. You can you can use it strictly for for just devices, um, but let's let's take a look of how this is done. So you want to type in the, the IP of your host. Let me make sure I have that right. So I'm dot twelve in my lab. Put in your credentials, and you'll see I have my template here as well and choose my VDisk, choose what collection I wanna put that into, and then same options here. But you'll notice it's automatically gonna assign a write cache drive. So that's one of the primary differences between the Zen Desktop um, wizard and the Stream VM wizard, is that write cache drive already pre-set up and put the bootstrap file in using um, the method I used in my last video. That's gonna automatically appear here and then uh, like before I can create my AD computer account and assign to where I want it so let's say I do win 10 streamed number and it'll do everything here it's actually gonna go in and create that desktop for me so you'll see here on the right I have win 10 streamed it's going in and creating that desktop for me. And we'll wait for this process. One device created, zero devices failed. And if we go here, let's start that up. And we started this one up earlier. Probably gonna see the same thing for the other. It's gonna do Windows updates. But if all does go well, It's going to, you see it's downloading the, the bootstrap file there, virtual disk found. So if all goes well, you'll see all this process go and it's eventually gonna run Windows. So pretty straightforward. Um, next video, I, I will talk to some more about provisioning services. I know this one was a little quick. We still have a lot of topics we can cover such as um, off da database offline mode, Pixie, TFTP boot methods, um, VDisk versioning. So how do we actually update the virtual disk? Um, so a lot of a lot of future videos to come. If you have any questions, as always, please write in the chat box below in the comment box below. If you did like this video, really appreciate it if you give me a like and plan for many many more to come. Thanks everyone.